Growing up in foster care, I was naturally sheltered from the outside world for the majority of my teenage life, meaning that without a father figure, I had to navigate through the world myself without a path and go through embarrassing and pretty dangerous situations and next experiences just to learn life lessons that could have been taught to me at a younger age. And going through these situations means that I had to learn life lessons myself and through the pain I've managed to adapt and persevere and come up with like a list of 18 lessons that I believe that every young man or woman should keep in mind before they turn 18. One, know how to control your emotions and who to talk to. Humans are naturally emotional people. You can't argue that. Like humans as an animal, as like a person, like we have high intelligence compared to other animals. And that means we have increased sense of awareness and emotional response to things. Sometimes our emotions can lead us astray and damage things and people that we care about. After I went through a breakup, I was very emotional and did a lot of things that I didn't think I was capable of. I became quite a, a toxic and self-centered person. Um, instead of just thinking rationally and not thinking about my ex and just trying to move on and just not contact her, my emotions got the better of me and I let them dictate me. So my, my own brain, like obviously your brain's in control of you, but I let my emotions take control of me and my brain just kind of was dictating what I'd be doing instead of just like my heart or my gut feeling. In that period, it was my first breakup and I let my emotions get the better of me and I let my emotions dictate my actions. And deep down when I knew that maybe reaching out again after the breakup or texting her or checking her social media pages wasn't a good idea, my emotional brain just wanted that hit of like pleasure and dopamine of just reaching out and having some sort of closure or some sort of answer that I just automatically wanted to do that instead. I couldn't control my emotions and do the rational thing, which was to just move on. And um, I'm not saying that you need to completely suppress your emotions and become emotionless and mysterious because as much as guys are told not to open up and not cry and stuff like that, you need to learn when to, when the right time is to grieve and when who the right people are to open up to. Because some people, if you open up to them, as unfortunate as it is, they'll lose respect for you. And if it's someone that you that you have romantic feelings for, they may actually lose attraction to you, which is quite sad. Um, it's just how people are biologically um, but if you're going to open up to anyone <laughs> open up to your family um, if you can trust them of course that is because your family will never judge you especially your mother if you have a like a strong mother who always cares for you then open up to her is always the best thing um, as a man that's probably the only woman that you can open up to without being judged um, but just learn to learn to grieve and keep your emotions private if they're going to affect others around you. If, if you think that they're not going to affect others, then you don't need to be so private about it. You can maybe speak on topics that are affecting you and speak about your emotions with friends and family. But if you feel like, like opening it is going to like open a can of worms that's going to make your problems worse, then it's best to try and learn to learn to harness your emotions but not completely bottle it up to the point where you're going to be struggling in silence to keep it private until it's permanent whether it's a new job a new date or a new hobby you have to learn to keep it private until it's permanent because if you open up and you start telling people about this new opportunity or this new person you're speaking to people will just associate that thing with you and if things don't work out maybe you get fired or you can't cope with this new thing that you're bragging to everyone about that you're doing and maybe it collapses <coughs> and it's not permanent anymore that's when people start to judge your lack of authenticity and consistency so maybe you say that 
maybe you've been going to the gym for a week and you start saying, oh, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. I'm going to be so big. I'm going to stick to this. I'm going to do all this. And then it just, it just caves in and you stop going. People are going to look down on you. They're going to secretly laugh about you or think that you're not capable of doing things that you stick to and you become somewhat of an untrustworthy person as a result of it. Um, <clears throat> I don't like using this as an example, but it's just something that I've had to learn from recently. But again, going to the point of my ex, I, when I started talking, when I started talking to her, just in like the beginning stages, like going on the first dates, I was telling everyone and everyone about this girl. And that meant that they were expecting me to like go all in with this and like make her my girlfriend and that. And even though that did happen, after a month it didn't work out and everyone I told everyone on the day on the day of the breakup literally as soon as she broke up with me I told literally everyone that I knew all my friends and family that we weren't together and then <clears throat> yeah everyone just kind of, not everyone just like a couple people just kind of like thought I was very um, inconsistent because I was very confident and I was very confident that this girl would be like someone who I'd be with for a long time and I was so vocal about it that people just kind of like had this expectation on me and as soon as it, it kind of caved in and didn't work out it showed that it wasn't permanent and I could have been a lot more private about it and when I could have explained to my friends a lot later in the relationship if it worked out that I was actually seeing her it would have been a lot better because I would have had less people judging me or affecting my affecting my own thoughts about it. Three, don't let others suppress your uniqueness. No one person in the world is the same. Everyone is unique in one way or the other. And you gotta learn to let no one suppress your uniqueness, whether that be your friends or your family. So growing up I was I wanted to fit in with everyone and masking my uniqueness was very difficult because I had autism and I wanted to enjoy and talk about the things that interested me because I had some very like nerdy niche interests like um, like I really liked Pokemon and uh, gaming and lots of little like TV shows and stuff that I was really fond of and I wanted to talk to people about and people just like thought it was cringy and immature that I liked these things and I just wanted to be accepted for who I was. So I stopped I stopped trying to enjoy the things that I liked doing and try to fit in with people who I wanted to be associated with just so I could be accepted and uh, follow what they did. And that meant that I kind of became um, less of a, a strong character. People lost respect for me because they could see that I was trying to be someone I wasn't just to fit in and get validation, which meant that I was always the kind of the laughing stock of the group or the person who would get picked on because I just didn't stand my ground because I was, I was never, I was never told to be myself or be authentic and just be who I want to be because I thought that fitting in was the safest thing to do and to be, be like everyone else just so you can avoid criticism and conflict but you don't want to do that go against the grain be who you want to be chase what you want and if someone judges you for that then so what who cares there are many many people out there who share the same interests as you you just have to find them four exercising and being outdoors is the best medicine you can never be sad at the top of a mountain that's a fact uh, i love hiking i love exercising in general. Um, currently, I'm going to the gym six times a week. I'm doing martial arts twice a week in this Muay Thai gym. And I actually recently started playing volleyball with my friend and I, I absolutely love it. And being active and moving your body, if you have the ability to do so, is absolutely beneficial. Helps with your physical health, mental health, socializing, networking, everything. And I think that it's crucial to have a I think it's crucial for everyone to work out um, in some way or the other, whether that to be increase your cardiovascular endurance or 
your muscular hypertrophy or anything like that if you want to chase that side but I think the most important thing is to do exercise that forms some sort of community or gives you some sort of accomplishment some goal to work towards so the going to the gym or working out is a sense of accomplishment and gain so it's something that you can visibly see the effects of so maybe you can run for faster or run faster or hold your breath for longer or I don't know you'll look better if you go to the gym and then also having a something like martial arts or a team-based sport on the side gives you a chance to socialize and build some sort of brotherhood and strong group of people who you can achieve things with and have fun with and I believe that if you're in any sort of predicament in your life just honestly going outside exercising any sort of way getting sunlight and as cliche as it sounds is honestly sometimes the best thing to do because I feel like the days that I skip out on the gym or don't get enough sunlight and the days where I usually feel the worst at the end of the day I'm kind of in bed and thinking why didn't I do more why didn't I go out in the sun or why didn't I push my body today and feel the benefits and the and the actual good healthy high that you get after completing an exercise or doing something strenuous. Five, get as much experience as you can young. The earlier you have certain experiences in good aspects of life, the earlier you'll start to realize how quickly you can build upon them. So I, I had a lot of experiences late in life, um, romantic, sexual, any, all that sort of stuff. Um, and I'm not just strictly speaking romantically or um, experiences in talking to the opposite gender or getting dates or anything like that. I mean, experiencing all sorts of life, getting a job, um, having some sort of responsibility, um, trying something out that's new to you and just starting things earlier such as maybe discovering working out earlier or discovering maybe you like doing martial arts earlier um, can help out because the earlier you build habits and have experiences the the better you can build upon them um, it's a lot harder to start things later in life um, the earlier you get experience the more free time you have because when you're younger you have a lot of free time when you're older you don't have that much free time so it's harder to start things and build upon them because you have other commitments in life and you have less free time to build habits and get experience because experiences younger on are usually the most life-changing and resonating because you're young you've never experienced it before and no one around you has probably experienced it before so if you're the first p person like in a group of friends to have an experience or build a hobby or get into a new habit it will be beneficial because you will be the trendsetter and you can be the person who creates a unique sense of self six don't create consume wait what <laughs> don't create consume oh my days <sighs> right six create don't consume so this is pretty explanatory. Um, I also discussed this in a, a previous video, which I'll link in the top right, but you want to create content and not consume it. You want to be a creator of sorts. Um, this means that you want to be using social media as a, as a tool and not a distraction in the way that you want to be um, publishing content that you are passionate about to others to showcase what you like doing and instead of consuming content like everyone else watching videos over and over and over and kind of reducing your attention span and not gaining anything interesting i feel like creating being a creator in the sense that you don't need to create digital content like record videos but even just creating content or creating creating things like physical things um creating paintings creating artwork uh, being artsy, um, craftsmanship, stuff like that. You want to be a creator, you want to showcase and work on your skills and being able to showcase that to people in a world where we can reach the most people in the world ever via social media is the best thing because 
you don't want to be someone who has nothing to offer. I believe that if you can create something and showcase that to someone, it showcases your uniqueness in a way. Seven, gain independence as soon as you can. Going to university, although not necessarily for the degree, but for the independence was the best move I made in my life. As it pressured me to fend for myself, um, buy my own food, cook my own meals, trans travel and socialize all by myself without any handholding. And although I've kind of had to do this my entire life anyway, due to being in foster care, I've never really had like, like a, a group of friends that are close enough that will support me like that or family that's always been there um, to do that for me. I've always kind of had to find my own path and kind of fend for myself anyway. Um, going to the university was that next step of living alone and um, just kind of having to really fend for myself. And this kind of relates into my next point of putting yourself into uncomfortable situations. Um, but getting independent as soon as you can, meaning that you can travel, um, get to places you want to be without having to rely on someone especially as a man, it make, makes you stand out from everyone else. Being able to drive, being able to provide for yourself financially and provide others financially is such a great feeling that you, you don't need to rely on someone. You can, you can have the tools and the independence to do exactly what you want to do when you want to. And as soon as you can become um, independent, I think that's the best because you don't want to be that 20 or 30 something year old guy who can't drive, who needs to ask for lifts or money or doesn't know how to do certain household chores or cook for himself. Cause that's just embarrassing and it's just gonna hold you back. The earlier you can gain life skills and fend for yourself is honestly the best, the best time to uh, do it early as you can. Eight, put yourself in uncomfortable situations. Nothing ever great came from comfort. It always came from reaching out for things that were uncomfortable, going through the uncomfortable processes and persevering and getting better from them. Um, recently, I've started a new martial arts gym called Cheng Muay Thai, and it's really great in the sense that I got into there and I thought that it was gonna be really uncomfortable and unsociable. I thought it was gonna be full of people who were egotistical and who would tried to fight me or ridicule my inexperience, but that wasn't the case. Um, sometimes uncomfortable situations are just made up in your head, or sometimes it may just be uncomfortable and maybe you just have to go through with it. Doing the most uncomfortable things usually leads to the most growth. Being comfortable and happy is nice. Like you need to rest and relax sometimes, but if you're not putting yourself into uncomfortable situations, you're not going to be progressing. If your body is used to doing something, it will just stick to doing that. For example, I, I go to the gym and I've recently realized that I'm not pushing myself as hard as I can be. Um, I've been going with a few friends recently and they really push me to the to limit when I'm working out. And I realize like, damn, I'm not really working as hard as I can be. I'm not getting uncomfortable. I'm not pushing myself as much as I should be. Yeah, just learn to be more uncomfortable and push yourself more um, where you can and just put yourself into more uncomfortable situations where you can grow. Nine, prioritize the things that will secure your future. This also leads back to my last two points and kind of trying to progress and get better in life, but you need to prioritize the things that are gonna actually secure your future, whether this be your career, your side hustle, or your working on your mental or physical health. You need to put these things at the front of your priorities. If you put artificial or bad habits at the, the top of your priorities, the things that are actually important to your growth and will help secure a healthy future for you will suffer because of it, because you're not allocating the right amount of effort and time to them, so they all lack in consequence. And that's really all there is to it. You need to just do less bad, less bad habits, more, wait, <laughs> you need to do less bad habits I need to do more good habits more often. 10, the world is your sandbox. If I wanted to, I could sell everything I own right now, go to Thailand and live there for the rest of my life and practice Muay Thai and become a professional Muay Thai fighter. I could do that. And that that's really, that really all there is to it. The world is your sandbox. In a world where we have the most opportunity, especially if you live in a first world country, you have so many opportunities. And even though it may not look like it, 
you need to just delve deeper and realize how many opportunities are actually there if you just reach out and go for them. They may seem uncomfortable or confusing at first, but if you educate yourself and reach out for things that may seem unreachable, you will eventually reach them. So you just gotta realize that sometimes your world, like life isn't as mundane as it is. It's not, it doesn't always have to be day to day, day in, day out, go to work, sleep, eat. Sometimes you can disrupt the schedule and realize that the world really is your sandbox and you can really have freedom if you, if you want it. Um, you gotta remind yourself every now and then that you can really just let go sometimes. Um, like a few a few months ago, I I kind of just like booked two days off work randomly, decided to drive to Snowdon um, at 5 a.m. in the morning and climb that, uh, climb that mountain. And it was the best experience ever because it kind of made me feel alive. I was like, okay, the world really is in my sandbox. I can drive where I want to. I can climb this mountain if I wanted to. I could climb it again after I climbed it if I wanted to. I can eat what I want to. I can sleep, I can travel around and yeah, this really, if you're blessed to have opportunities in life, then really just make the most of it because you only live once, cliche as it sounds. 11, never tolerate disrespect. Now onto more serious topics. You should never tolerate disrespect ever in your life. Whether that be from your boss, your friends, your family, you need to stand your ground because any man does not tolerate disrespect. You need to just kind of take charge of your life. You don't want to be that guy who's always getting picked on or ridiculed because you need to just put yourself out of those situations. You can't change someone who naturally disrespects you. You may be able to silence them or like get them to disrespect you less, but at the end of the day, you can't gain respect from someone who's always kind of disrespected you. Like I have bullies from high school that see me now and they still wouldn't respect me because they're kind of just jealous of where I've got to because I was kind of like the the weird unsuccessful kid in high school and now I'm kind of got a name for myself, I'm kind of doing well for myself. And although some people have seen my progress and congratulated me and I've, some have even said that I've, that I've inspired them um, for the amount of growth that I've made in such a short time under such circumstances and setbacks. Some people just will never disres some people just never respect you and that's how it will be. I say just don't tolerate disrespect and to put yourself, move yourself out of situations where you get, get disrespected because if you don't get respected then your self your self esteem will just naturally go down and in turn the rest of your life will suffer because of it. 12. Live poor to become rich. Ever noticed that the most rich people in society are usually the less flashiest and the more private about their life? Because I have. You need to live poor. You need to live below your means to become rich. And I'm not meaning that you need to live in poverty if you have finances to gain wealth, but you need to realize that money is not everything in the sense that you need to enjoy things that aren't as materialistic. So this means that you need to do things that are free and get experiences where you can gain more from them than you could than if you spent money on something. So instead of maybe buying a new pair of shoes or sneakers or trainers or whatever, just maybe just go outside or spend some time with some friends and just realize that money is not the answer to everything because the more you view money as a tool and less as kind of like a crutch that um, kind of dictates how enjoyable your life is, then that's when you start to really accumulate wealth because wealth is silent and the people who are the richest know this because they're the ones who kind of are humble and they know that money is not the answer to everything. 13. Stay down till you're up. This ties back to point two of um, keeping it private till it's permanent, but you need to stay down until you're up. This means that you shouldn't be exaggerating or showcasing a part of your life that you're not that experienced in or talking on something that you aren't experienced in. You won't be able to generate the authenticity if you don't know what you're talking about. If you're going to showcase something, you should be knowledgeable in it. So I'll, I'll just use the gym for another example. I, I, know I love using the gym as an example for a lot of life lessons, but um, if you're someone who likes to like criticize people 
on their form or their physiques and you also don't have a physique that's also good then you shouldn't be commenting at all you shouldn't be if you if you're in like a worse position than someone you shouldn't be really criticizing them is my opinion on them people above you will give you good criticism and people below you in a certain thing will just give you bad criticism like good criticism and bad criticism is different bad criticism is just things that you won't be able to learn from that will just affect your mental health and good criticism is stuff that's constructive and won't hurt you that you'll be able to grow from um kind of a, a short lesson but yeah just stay down to your up and i just mean this just to avoid any ridicule because you don't want to be that guy who thinks he knows everything and then someone more knowledgeable comes along and just tells you to just show up basically because you don't know what you're speaking about. 14. Always take the shot, never hesitate. Rejection or failure is worse than regret in my sense. You need to realise you just have to take that shot and never, never hesitate because the fear of rejection is a powerful thing and it leads a lot of people to having regret of not being able to do something or try something they actually really wanted to do but they were fearful that they wouldn't succeed in. Maybe that'd be talking to a talking to a girl or a guy they find attractive or trying something new out um, trying a new food going to a new place trying a new hobby um, maybe they're scared that it won't work out or they won't like it and you just got to realize you got to try it and you will never know until you try and in terms of facing rejection the more times you face rejection the stronger you become out of it because it will just be like another thing for you the more times you get rejected or fail the stronger you will be out of it and the more you have the confidence to do things and approach things with a higher self-esteem basically so you can actually do more things that appeal to you and your brain actually wants to chase 15 the more you persevere the stronger you will become self-explanatory really the more hardships and painful experiences you go through in life um, not necessarily trauma because that's a different, a different part, but if you can persevere through painful experiences and come out on top of them, then you'll just become a very stoic and strong character. Um, because if, if you've had your hand held your entire life, it's a lot harder to become independent and become a critical thinker and be a lot more self-aware of one's life. Um, I've been complimented a lot of times of my critical thinking and self-analysis of my own life and how I use it to my advantage to get what I want because I can realise my strengths and weaknesses and really analyse my brain to not take me in a direction that I don't want to go. But that is a, a benefit of me having to figure everything out myself due to persevering through tough experiences like foster care and having to deal with um, the I'd say the negative sides of Asperger's because there is some negative sides of Asperger's I find but I try to engineer it in a way where I can actually benefit from my diagnosis and not let it affect me so yeah honestly the strongest people are usually the ones who have been through the most the most hardships in life 16 be a gentleman in a world of boys so this one is also quite self-explanatory in my opinion a lot of guys now don't really have a backbone in the sense that not a lot of guys are independent or can stand their ground or command respect as as they used to do years ago um i think a lot of people have lost their spines um in this new generation i don't want to be very like political about it but uh, or traditional about it really but i feel like uh, a lot of guys in their 20s um and this also like applies to women, like you can be a gentleman, but you can also be a lady in this sense. But there's too many like immature boys and girls in this world that don't really think about the future. They're just living kind of in the present and they don't stand out because they're not really, they're not really interesting and they're not focused on their future um, as much as they should be. And I don't want to say that I'm like some like really mature person because I'm not but I'm, I'm I'm working towards it I'm not purposely like acting childish and trying to become more of a man and more like like more full of wisdom and uh, get more experiences in life out um, and experience more more things in life to become more of a man and become more a gentleman to be 
to be a better father and um, yeah that's pretty much it um, kind of like a weird topic to speak about because um, I, I don't believe that like everyone's immature in this generation there's just like a set few but um, you just want to be a part of that percentage that are on track and have strong morals and aren't just living life day to day and just living in like a state of high excitement and dopamine chasing that most people are today just because it's kind of like the live fast die young mindset so yeah kind of like a I kind of need to try to elaborate more on this I might do in the comments but yeah that's just uh, number 16. 17 be a natural listener you need to listen to people more than you speak this means that when someone's speaking you should just give them your full undivided attention and I know it seems like basic human etiquette but a lot of people don't do it their mind is subconsciously thinking about their next their next step what maybe what they're having to eat later or maybe their favorite show or video game is still in their head while they're trying to listen to someone but giving some someone their your undivided attention be, becomes very beneficial because because you learn that you're forget that you you start to make the other person feel like they're actually valued and worthy if you take genuine interest in what they're saying and not just like taking interest just for the sake of it like being genuinely interested in asking questions about someone is a good quality and just being able to be more be more of a listener than a talker is great uh, i feel anyway 18 stay curious and just like my channel intro goes stay curious investigate things that pique your interest and always stay unique so yeah thank you for watching this video i hope uh something resonated with you or you're able to get some sort of wisdom from this video um it's not something i usually do but i just thought it'd be something that would be nice to talk about and provide some value so yeah stay curious